hey guys welcome back to our channel today i'm going to show you guys how to make these super cute three feet tall marquee letter life here's me standing next to them to give you guys a comparison about how big they are i am 411 so they're right around three feet so for this project we're going to need a hot glue gun just your standard at home hot glue gun will work and then we're also going to need some glue stick refills because it is a very glue heavy project and a ruler as well as an exacto knife i have two just because i bought them in a pack together and a pencil and then of course our light um i just found these at five and below for five dollars which i definitely recommend getting the cheap ones because we're just going to take them apart anyway so there's no point in spending that much money and then we're going to need two white poster boards and then another non-white poster board. It doesn't really matter what color, I just chose black. So the first step is to take out our non-white poster board and use our ruler and pencil to draw up a template for our letter. I will be showing you guys how to do the letter N today and here is an example of kind of what I wanted my N to look like. I would definitely recommend trying to find a picture or typing around in Word doc and different fonts trying to figure out which style letter you want to recreate. And then once you find that image, go ahead and assign a measurement to each side of the letter and then that way it'll keep you consistent as you're drawing it out. I would also highly recommend trying to use as much of each poster board for every letter template as possible. That way, whenever you're all finished with your letters, they end up around the same height. If you're cutting off the sides or the top and the bottom, then your letter is going to get short or it's going to be skinnier compared to the other ones. So you want to try to keep the whole poster board um, in the letter template as much as possible. Since I did this in pencil, you guys can't really see the tracing that I'm doing. It kind of looks like I'm just drawing on nothing, but I'm going to hold it up to the light so you guys can kind of see it. There you go. It just has to be dark enough to where you can trace it with the X-Acto knife, which is the next step. So we're just going to cut it out. All right, and then once you have it cut out, you're going to place it on top of your white poster board. And then you're going to go ahead and trace it onto the white poster board with your pencil. So even though this process of cutting and tracing might seem a little bit repetitive at the beginning, it will help you so much in the long run to have a more clean finished product. There's a few reason why I did it this way. The first reason is because I have a couple repeats of letters in my last name and so having a template makes it easier to reuse that letter and that way it keeps your letters consistent as well. If I have one O template and two O's in my last name, which I do, I can reuse the O template and it saves me time from having to completely redraw that letter. Alrighty, and once you finish that up, we're going to take our X-Acto knife and we're going to cut out our letter once again. And also, whenever you're drawing a template, it requires a lot of erasing and redrawing and sketching, and so it's not always the cleanest outline. And so I wanted to have a black poster board or a non-white poster board that I was not going to use in my actual finished product to just kind of perfect my shape. That way the background of my letters are not all smeared or smudged with eraser marks, etc. The next step is to take your second white poster board and cut it long ways into four inch strips. 
You can do them shorter or longer. I just chose to do four inches because it was pretty standard. And then we're gonna measure them out to the lengths of each of our sides. Okay, now that we have all of our edge pieces cut out, we're going to bring out our hot glue gun again, and we are gonna glue each edge piece to the corresponding side of the letter. And this is just a friendly reminder that this does not have to be perfect. There are so many sides of my um, project that are crooked or lopsided or not perfectly straight. And that's okay because it stands up, it lights up, and that's all that matters. Nobody's going to get close enough to be like, this is not straight or this is crooked. And if they are, well, honestly, do you really want them at your event in the first place if that's the kind of person that they are? I would definitely just want to put your mind at ease and remind you to just do your best and it's going to turn out beautiful. All right, once you get that final piece secured on there, it's time to do the stand test and see if it can stand up on its own. Looks like this one is good. And then we're gonna get right into the hole cutting process so that we can go ahead and insert the lights. I tried to zoom in a little so you guys would be able to see. I drew a few dots off camera, one for each light, just to kind of mark the position of each so that I could kind of envision it before I cut to save myself from unnecessarily cutting or cutting in the wrong spot. I just wanted to plan out exactly where I wanted everything, again, so for a more clean finished product.
So I forgot to record this part, but when you're taking the bulbs off the lights, oftentimes if you buy cheap lights, they'll just pop right off. So for me, with these, I was able to literally just pop the bulbs right off of the light. And then when you're inserting it, you're just going to kind of finagle, I think that's the right word, finagle the light through the hole. Just kind of twisting it, as you can see in the video, I'm just kind of twisting it through the hole. The hole should be small enough to where it's a tight fit, like... The light should be able to stay inside the hole without any adhesive or anything. It should be tight enough to hold it in place. And then whenever you're going through and inserting the lights, you're just gonna match up the light with each hole. Now the lights might need a little reinforcement, so that's why I have my hot glue gun. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue at the site. And then I'm going to just hold my light there until it dries and hardens. And then it should be a nice firm hold. You might have to get a little creative with your light placement. Certain letters like H were a little more difficult than others. And I think I actually had to use two light strings for the H because of the way that the holes were positioned. But get creative. The lights are, like I said, not super expensive. Definitely worth it because I love the way it turned out.